I've got a 2015 SeaDoo GTX S155, uh, and I put a RAM uh, device mount here for my cell phone because I use uh, Navionics app when I uh, when I'm doing touring, so I know where I am. And then I also wanted to put a uh, a charging port in so I could keep my phone charged. So I put a uh, 12 volt uh, lighter uh, receptacle in with uh, just use a typical USB adapter uh, in there. And so I put this receptacle in that's got seems to be waterproof. It's got a uh, a boot that shuts. I bought this one off. Uh, eBay and they seem to all of a sudden be kind of rare like they ship from Australia, but I see a similar one by a brand named Marinko at uh, Walmart.com and other places it looks to be I think it's the same Part but I'll uh, if I can find a link to it I'll put that in the description and I'll put a link to the, uh, the eBay uh, seller where I bought the the mount as well um, So I didn't drill into the sea dew blind here as I would never recommend anyone do I put these stainless steel uh, uh, bolts and nuts on uh, With this piece removed from the machine and same with the, the adapter I took this piece off which is pretty simple to do on this machine so I could have a look and see what's underneath there and make sure I wasn't going to uh, hit steering linkage or anything that interfere with anything there. And obviously I had to, to do some wiring to supply the power to that adapter. I supplied it just continuous uh, 12 volts from the power to the dash. Um, I wasn't worried about it being switched power with the ignition or anything because if I'm not using the CDU, I've, I've got nothing plugged into it so there shouldn't be any draw on there. Um, so this is where I mounted it, and to get the access, I'll just show you what's involved. So I've just raised the hood here, and I've, um, I'm going to show you how I got to the various locations to get this piece off to install the, the RAM mount. Um, so this gauge cluster, you can just pop this piece out by jamming something, hopefully I don't scratch it too bad with a screwdriver, but this piece surprisingly is just, you know, mounted with some plastic uh, sort of pressure clips. These two on the bottom fit over, so they fit on the outside, and then these two on the top, uh, they fit in underneath here. There's two, two tabs here that pop into these slots. So that's all that's involved in getting that piece off um, to get at your gauge cluster and I had to get access there this looks ugly but I've uh, I didn't do a pretty job but this is all um, well secured with um, underneath this ugly tape is um, liquid electrical tape and I actually ran uh, heat shrink tubing to the sides of the uh, T connection so it I mean, I ended up wrapping tape around it after, so it looks ugly. But I didn't just, I didn't just splice in wires and tape them. And I and I soldered them. I know there's some debates about whether, uh, you know, soldering should be done on electrical connections on marine. But I, I'm a big fan of it, so um, that's what I did. So this is the power running to my, uh, to my um, adapter. So the wires I I just used um, signal reading probes to figure out which of these had power and ground full time and uh, it's a red and a black wire uh, the power wire is red with a black stripe it appears or is that a green stripe black stripe red with a black stripe is the power wire on this end at the bottom and then the terminal red right above it the black wire ended up being the uh, the common ground back to the battery so these these two wires on this end on the uh, port side of the machine nearest the left handlebar um, that's where I got power and ground that was full battery uh, voltage unswitched to this connector so this is the connector into the back of the gauge cluster just go around and show you how you remove that connector 
I can remember. Yeah, there's just a, an adapter thing that pulls out. Just use your thumb and forefinger, and that'll kind of get that started. And then you might have to get a tool in behind there to kind of pull it out a little more. And then once as it pulls out, that just releases that connector. So really simple to undo your connector at your cluster. And then to reconnect the power, it just pushes back on. So I disconnected it, did my wiring, and then uh, it's a nice, nice connection that makes when it's clipped back on. Um, so that was the power. To get this cluster off to uh, drill the holes and for, for the devices, it's a case of finding these clips, and I'm going to tip the uh, I'm tip the steering up here so we can see better. Tilt the steering wheel all the way up. I tilt the helm all the way up, and I'm going to go around the other side where I don't have a, a docking line on there. The rope is in the way. But if you get on this side, you'll see there's a clip um, right where you would tie your your dock line. Just below here, there's a clip, and all you got to do is push these in with some sort of tool like this. And you may have just seen that that just lifted. So as I pulled that in, it just relieved the pressure, and now this piece will come up. So if I go around the other side, I don't know if we'll take the rope off or I'll try and work around it here. Let's pop, pop. Give myself some rope here. assembly out and then have a look underneath and you'll see um, on this 2015 GTXS there was absolutely nothing under this location so it was a perfect spot to mount that and there was really nothing under where I mounted the ram mount as well so I used uh, stainless steel screws and nuts and washers with lock washers that I got just out of a kit from the hardware store I found that buying a kit of stainless steel fasteners was cheaper in the long run than trying to buy individual ones. You can buy a little sort of plastic kit box with a bunch of stainless hardware in it and that worked out really well. And I decided to mount it here because I am using the navigation. I want to be able to watch where I'm going at the same time as referencing uh, my screen for Navionics. And uh, I chose this RAM mount um, because of the reviews but also because it's got this sort of safety that helps retain the phone when the phone goes down in there this kind of comes up around the corners of it and gives you sort of a secondary uh, level of insurance that your device isn't going to pop off of here um, and I've hit some pretty big waves and things and and it, although it shakes around a little bit um, there's never been any evidence that the phone was going to come off um, one thing I would caution you about with this RAM mount, they give you some super glue to, to glue these uh, things on. And, and it is super glue, and there wasn't a lot of warnings about that. Uh, but once you use it, you want to make sure you dispose of that glue properly. And you want to watch you don't slop it around on here, because then you got a mess. you got to sort of peel it off afterwards. But um, they, I don't know why they don't just install these rubber things from the factory but they have you they are on there but you have to pull them off per the instructions and then put some super glue on and put them back on i particularly think maybe contact cement would have been a better choice but it is what it is and it seems to work just fine they don't seem to want to pull off so i guess it did work but uh that's basically the process of um putting these on let's see uh one of only two mods I did to this machine, the other one I put the newer uh, style uh, grips because it's a 2015 machine, it only had the regular style grips, so I updated it to the uh, to the palm rest grips, which are a little more comfortable on the long journey. So there you go, hope that helps somebody if they're looking to install a uh, phone mount.